Understanding your data is one of the most important parts of creating a data visualization. This video will go over basic data structure and what happens once you import your data into Tableau Public. This data set lists every Olympic athlete who has won a medal since the 2000 Games in Sydney, Australia, and how many medals they won and in which sports. In general, there are three rules to formatting your data. The first is make sure that your data, including all of the column headers, starts in cell A1. When you find data sets, sometimes they come with titles and descriptions. You want to get rid of all of these and move your data right away into the very first cell. Second is have your first row be your column headers. They should describe what data is in every column, whether it's the name of the athlete, their age when they won the medal, the country they represent, and so on and so forth. Finally, every row should be one piece of data. In this case, that means every row is one athlete that won a medal for every Olympic Games. Notice that we have one column for athlete, but also one column for each of the different types of medals that they won, whether it's bronze, silver, gold, or the total medals that they won. Let me show you a variation on this data set that is slightly different. Notice that every row is now one type of medal per one athlete for every Olympic Games. Now we only have one column for the number of medals that every athlete won instead of four. But we also have another column that tells us the medal type. This is important because you'll notice that sometimes certain athletes appear multiple times, even if it's for the same Olympic Games, because they won medals of different kinds. This distinction is important because it'll affect how you do your analysis in Tableau Public. Let's go ahead and bring our very first version of our data set into Tableau Public. We'll bring the second one in later and compare the two. First, select the type of data, in this case, Microsoft Excel, and then select the file. If your file has multiple sheets like mine does, pick the one you want to use. Now you'll see all of your column headers on the left-hand side, broken into two sections, one called dimensions and the other called measures. Dimensions are categorical. They describe your data. What was the name of the athlete? What country did they represent? They are typically alphabetical, though dates or when did the athlete win is an exception. Measures are numerical and represent your actual data records. How many medals did they win? These are fields you will want to perform mathematical functions on, such as sum, average, or count. Tableau will also always build a field called number of records, which is how many rows of data you have in your data set. This is particularly useful if you want to see how many athletes won medals in a particular sport or in a particular year. However, it does not tell you exactly how many athletes are in your data set on a whole because we can have an athlete win medals in multiple Olympics. Again, dimensions are categorical and measures are numerical. Tableau automatically guesses which one is which, though you can move them back and forth. Take age, for example. Averaging age or taking the median is a very useful metric, but so is using age as a category. Describing your data, such as how many athletes won medals for each age, like so. You can also change a field's type on the canvas itself. Remember before I talked about finding the number of athletes who have won medals since the 2000 Games. I can do that and account for duplicates by dragging out the athlete name and changing it to a measure by clicking on the drop down, and in this case, I'll choose count distinct, which will only count an athlete the first time their name shows up. Finally, let's return to an earlier point about each row being one piece of data. If you recall, I'm connected to a data set where each row is one athlete for each Olympic Games. However, I have a version of that data set, which is one athlete and each type of medal they won for each Olympic Games. Some of the fields here are a little bit different. First, let's bring out number of records. Notice that we have more rows of data in this data set than we did in the first version. This is because, as we mentioned before, some athletes will be duplicated because they won different types of medals in the same sport for the same Olympic Games. There are some benefits to structuring our data this way. First, it's easy to do analysis on the medals themselves as opposed to the athletes. Notice in this data set, I have one measure for medal count, and in the first data set, I had four. 
In the second version of the dataset, I also have one extra dimension that tells me the metal type. This lets me do very easy analysis on the metals, including dragging them onto color, so I can see the breakdown of the metals won by their type. You can do this in the first dataset, but it requires a few more steps. The flip side is, now let's say I want to find the average age for athletes who won medals. It's not so simple as bringing out age and changing it to an average. If I go back to my first data set and do the exact same thing, you'll see that the two averages are not quite identical. Why? Because age shows up multiple times for each athlete, because each athlete sometimes will also show up multiple times. Accounting for this takes a few extra steps as well. For my particular analysis, because I care more about analyzing the athletes, the first version of the data set is probably the better way to go for me. If you have any questions about data structure, feel free to email us at social at